What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some good versus bad route running. So we're going to be showing a bad example of a route versus a coverage look, and then after that, we're going to be showing a good example, the correct way to run that same exact route versus that same exact press coverage, zone coverage, off-man coverage look, whatever it is. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you would like a daily workout schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. It's over 500 plus wide receiver drills and gym exercises mapped out with the exact sets and reps to do. And we give you video examples of each drill. So again, very first link in that description below. Let's get back to this video. So now first things first here, we're going to be going over a fade route that is an M-O- are. So an MOR means a mandatory outside release. So that's kind of a problem sometimes, right? If you have to do a mandatory outside release, and let's say you got a DB who's shaded to the outside, this DB's sole purpose when you come up to line of scrimmage and he is shaded to the outside is to take away the outside route. He does not want us to run the fade. He does not want us to run an out route, a corner route. He wants to force everything inside to where he has safety help. Don't get beat outside. So sometimes what wide receivers will do when they have this MOR is they just take off and they try to run. This guy's going to get hands, going to force to the sideline. Usually on an MOR too, we have something underneath, like you'll run a fade and maybe it's a five yard out, 10 yard out, but we still want to try to get as open as possible just in case we might get a shot with the ball. We always want to expect the ball. So if you have this type of look, but we don't give any type of inside move and we just try to run around, this is what's going to happen. This is not the quarterback's fault, you guys. Maybe it was a little bit underthrown, but even if he leads him, he is right on the sideline. There is no room for the quarterback to fade him open. If you're running a fade route, you have to give the opportunity for the quarterback to actually fade you. And that's simply because he just kind of tried to run around this DB. What we need to do, if he's about two yards away from me, I need to close the space with him. I need to step on his toes and I need to give him some kind of fake to the inside. You got to give him something because again, this guy's taught not to bite. He's taught to keep his leverage, but we got to get him to at least hesitate so we have a chance. If we just try to run around him, that is not going to work. So let's play this full speed and then we'll show a good example of a mandatory outside release versus outside shade press. A little bit different, but very, very similar. So again, we have outside shade. This is like closer press coverage. Now you might be thinking, well, oh, well, easy for you to say on this one because in the last example, the guy was about two to three yards off. Guys, nothing would change. The only thing about your release is instead of just giving a move right away off the line, you would close the space and then give a move. Nothing would change conceptually. Just the type of release that you would use would change. So this guy's walked up right up on the line, not giving us any move. He's essentially closing the distance for me. So watch what this receiver does. He gives gives this quick jab release to the inside and you see he has to force an outside release versus outside shade but he's giving the quarterback an opportunity to fade him he's giving the quarterback an opportunity to give him a chance with the ball even on a mandatory outside release so what's this release that he used called what does he do here this is called a inside jab release or some people could think of this just like as like a a quick step or however you want to think of it but it's the foot that is up so it's his inside foot he's got outside shade press he just gives this quick jab to the inside Side. You got to give him something and you got to give him your best move. And I'm not saying that this will work every time. Sometimes you have a very, very disciplined DB on the outside. You give him this move and you're still going to get jammed and forced to that sideline, at least, the, at least the best that DB possibly can. But at least with this move, we have a chance, right? Usually a mandatory outside release. You're either going to be getting a chance with the ball or you're taking this DB out of the play so we could throw something underneath. But let's give ourselves a chance. And that's why he goes with this jab move. Now, anytime that you're doing this move opposite from a DB's leverage, if he's outside leverage. Guys, you have to make sure that you sell with your hips, your shoulders, and actually step quickly to the inside. If you guys just give a quick step, but your hips and shoulders like give away that you're running outside or they stay facing down the middle of the field, we're not going to get space. Almost think of it like you were trying to turn your belly button opposite of where you're running. If you turn your belly button to the inside and that DB's watching those hips, we might have a chance to get that separation here. So fellas, this jab release is a great one to use if you have to do a mandatory outside release. If it's not an MOR and you get outside shade, like, let's attack him. Let's just do the opposite. Let's attack him with this outside foot, take the inside release, and try to stack him. But again, this is strictly for an MOR situation. So let's play at full speed. Again, great job using that jab, giving himself some space to the outside, a little bit of it for that quarterback to give him a chance. Okay, so now 
I know the title of this video was good versus bad route running. However, we are going to be going over a good and bad over the shoulder catch. So I think this is something that um, a lot of wide receivers don't necessarily um, get coached up on enough. So that's why we're going to be going over this. So this is going to be a slot fade route. So this wide receiver is running a slot fade over the top. We have inside shade coverage and this DB is going to be right on his hip in the end zone, but he ultimately gets a PBU and we're going to talk about why. So let's play this thing full speed. So he comes off the ball. He pushes up vertical. DB's on his hip. We got him by a step. Ball's thrown over the shoulder, but I think the wide receiver is the reason why this ball ended up on the ground. Obviously not taking anything away from the DB. That's a great play, but there's some things that we could do as a receiver to make sure this doesn't happen. Anytime <clears throat> we are in this situation, they coach DBs. DB coaches will coach their DBs to play a wide receiver's hands. So if a wide receiver's hands go up for the ball and he raises them up, a DB knows exactly where to punch out for the ball, where to stick his hand up, where to make a play on the way down because we are showing our hands early. What you want to do is you want to have something called late hands. Anytime you're catching an over-the-shoulder pass, you do not want to catch the ball above eye level. I don't even think you want to catch it at eye level. I think you should wait for it to drop and catch it at your chest level. So this DB doesn't have a chance to play our hands. And again, that that comes at that you that takes reps, right? Like that's not something that you're just going to walk out to the field one day and just have it down automatically. It takes reps. It takes time. You have to make sure that you trust your eyes. You have to make sure that you rep this thing out because honestly, it's all hand-eye coordination. Nation. It's all being able to track the ball in even when it's a late throw over the top. So now let's look at the second example. So what we got here is we got a DB who's lined up inside shade right here. And again, he's off. We're running a fade route. So it's very similar. We got to attack his leverage, got to attack him, and then push back up vertical to the outside and try to get some space. So watch what he does. So he attacks him inside, gets to the outside. DB's right on his hip, but I want you to see how late his hands are. He catches that ball like pretty much it's almost like a body catch, right? Do I recommend to catch this thing off of your chest like this? Probably not if you're a younger wide receiver. I think you should always try to catch that thing with your hands. You see a lot of NFL wide receivers do this where they catch it off their chest plate. Again, they're professionals. They've probably been doing it a long time. They don't drop the ball, but I don't recommend this is something you try. You see it a lot. Sometimes receivers will run over the middle and they're in traffic and they'll catch it with their body. <clears throat> Honestly, what that does is that just helps them um, – that just helps them secure the pass, especially in traffic, because they know they're probably going to get hit, and they know the quarterback's probably putting some heat on it. So it just helps them kind of secure the ball a little bit. But I don't like it on over-the-shoulder pass. I think it's a great way to get the ball to bounce off of your chest plate for you younger guys, okay? So now, but again, you see how he doesn't show his hands to the last second. He doesn't show his hands till the ball's like pretty much already there. This DB has no idea where the ball is in this specific position right here. He's running down the field. He has no clue. He has no idea. If he looks back for the ball, he might lose us, right? So he's playing us. He's playing our hands. And if we don't let him know where that ball is going to be, that is easy money for us over the top every single time. So let's play this thing full speed to fellas. Make sure over the shoulder pass, this could be a corner, a deep post, a fade. DB's right on our hip. Let's make sure we are late with our hands. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like an eight week wide receiver on field and gym workout schedule, everything wide receivers should be doing in the gym and on the field to improve their skills. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.